I have revolutionized Wi-Fi battling on YouTube. Back in 2018, when I joined the GBA, the Global Battle Association, my favorite draft league of all time, I wanted an efficient way of keeping track of my opponent's HP. So I created the HP bar, something to be used on overlays for anybody with a capture card at the time. This could help you see exactly where your opponent's Pokemon's health was, making it much easier to calc. However, about a month ago, I had another idea. One that with the help of my coding friend and one tireless night in a hotel room in Mexico would change everything. I present to you the layout. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aster, what the hell, man? This is just a basic ass layout. All you did was put some stuff in some places. Well, not exactly. Because you see, while the matchup might be a static image, the rest of the screen isn't. This is going to help tremendously for team builder portions as well. But the most important part are those boxes all the way down there. You see, I've already put in what six Pokemon I think my opponent's bringing. And if you can see, there are six green bars. Now, again, you might think these were added in post editing, but what if I did this? Oh yeah, that's right. That tornado's health is going up and down. Let's do uh, Overquill next. Here we go. Just messing with that. Let's uh, let's bring it to uh, 57. How about that? Yeah, 50. Oh, went a little too high. There we go. So as you can see, I can manually change HP on my overlay. Now, this took a lot of work, especially the programming part, because the actual interface uh, that we're using here, it's a Python program. It's basically six sliders that go up and down. There's a gradient that changes, the number changes in consequence, the percentage of the bar that's filled. Uh, it's actually really intuitive. And I just have to change these manually as the game occurs. But now I can. Now let's look at this box directly below me. So once again, not a static image. I'm looking at my team right now. That's my Sneasler. That's my Walking Wake. That's my Rillaboom. That's my Zapdos. Back to Rillaboom, back to Walking Wake. There's my Zapdos. And then we go to uh, my Screamtail and over to my Colossal. So if you guys want a quick brief check of, of what I'm bringing here, Grassy Seed, uh, pretty defensive Sneasler into this rain-based team. Uh, easy sweep with uh, Grassy Terrain up. Got to make sure to keep that up. Then we got Walking Wake, Choice Specs, absolutely blows apart the opposing team. Rocky Helmet, Rillaboom, this is going to help me identify what exactly the Urshifu is throughout the game. Uh, can also help to pick up uh, stray KOs that are left over on certain Pokemon. It's also a really good Rotom switch in, obviously. Able to fake out, U-turn out, get in something like my Zapdos uh, to be able to get off a uh, another U-turn because I'm not actually carrying Hurricane on this thing. It's Discharge Weather Ball. Uh, Weather Ball is really going to help into Mamo if rain is up. Uh, then we've got our Screamtail, which can get rid of rain and also is a rock setter and can help heal up the rest of the team. And finally, we've got a really cool Colossal here with Weakness Policy. This is meant to abuse the Overquill uh, if it wants to go for Spikes, let's say, uh, and follows up with a Liquidation the turn after. It'll actually give me Steam Engine. Uh, I'll Rapid Spin away the Spike. I'll go up to max speed. I'll get Weakness Policy and I'll knock it out with Earth Power. Uh, of course, I can't get... Uh, Okos on Pokemon like the uh, Rotom or the Urshifu, uh, but still, I think that this is a crazy good set. Uh, and even if the Ditto were to come, whatever it locks into, I should have something for. Uh, for the Scald, I have Walking Wake over here. Uh, for the Earth Power, I'll have my Rillaboom. And of course, uh, for Power Gem, I'll have a free setup turn with my Sneasler. Now, if you haven't paid attention to the thumbnail and the title, you wouldn't know what all of this is for. We're in a tournament called the BBR Summer Scramble. This is a tournament being played on Wi-Fi, obviously. I was invited by D-Ray to join as D-Ray is one of the commissioners of the BBR. And I drafted what I think to be a pretty competent team. Uh, would have liked a steel type rocker over something like Scizor, but Scizor was the best steel option. It was kind of cheap at 12 points. It did just get uh, knockoff, so it's still missing Roost, unfortunately. So we're lacking a little bit on the recovery end of things. That's where Screamtail kind of comes in, as well as the grassy terrain from the Rillaboom. And this tool below me is also going to be very useful for keeping track of what my opponent's sets are. I can adjust their HP, their, their stats in general, their item, ability, moves, basically on the fly as the game is happening. And I can do that for every single last team member. Anyway, this is our pools phase, and we're going to be taking on three players, or at least it was three players, until one of them unfortunately had to drop out because his switch stopped turning on. 
and our opponent today is Big Time Brownie, as you may have seen in the overlay. Now, Brownie has actually lost to our third and final opponent, the other A of the A duo, my two-time DPL teammate, Amel. And what that means is that if I beat Brownie today, I am guaranteed making it through pools. Now, one last thing with this overlay real quick. Firstly, now you see that little terror crystal that popped up next to Mamoswine? That can be changed on the fly because we actually don't get to find out what our terror types are until right before the battle. And lastly, if you look just right over Pelipper real quick, you'll see that um, there's this uh, the double line that appears here. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about Scarlet and Violet, but when a Pokemon is taking damage, the health bar shifts up and to the right. Up and to the right, there we go. So it makes it very hard to track how much d damage a Pokemon has taken uh, just by looking at the HP bar. You can wait until all the animations are over, but you're actually losing time by doing so. So what I've done here is that I've constructed not one, but two brand new HP bars to keep track of exactly where my opponent's health is, both when they're static and when they're taking damage. Finally, you may be asking, well, where is the game going to be? Well, that should be kind of obvious. You guys can probably see it right now. It's actually right under our matchup right now. So if I just get rid of that and do that, and there we have it. So we're about to play our match. Let's get right into it. All right, here we go. We've matched. And uh, basically the way that I'm going to lead this is if I see the ditto, I'm leading Zapdos. If I don't see the ditto, okay, so I'm leading Zapdos, cool. No Pelipper, interesting. Okay, so my Weather Ball on Zapdos is basically dead unless I can initiate Weather, uh, weather Ball Fire um, through Sunny Day. Uh, it's not bad because it actually, it actually cuts his stuff off. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. No rain, hmm, okay. Cool, cool. We'll deal. All right, so we're going to lead Zapdos, um, and the rest doesn't matter. Zapdos is a little bit of a dangerous lead into his Mamoswine, but if he leads Ditto, which he did do against Amol, uh, I don't really want to have to deal with that. So, yeah, let's go with this. And my Colossal should be a good check to his Overquill because there's no rain. So I should be able to come in on it, no problem, and just spin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. No headphones today. Got my uh, my TV on, which is my third monitor. It's playing uh, the sound for me. All right, here we go. Got our calc ready. So we're leading Zapdos, which is 367 HP. So I want to see how much I take from move. Got my calculator in front of me. Let's see, okay, so it is a ditto lead, good. This is why I didn't want to lead Wake, because Wake is like really free into his team, but not if he leads this, right? So I don't have a ground type on this draft, uh, which makes this a little bit problematic. Uh, however, this thing has a lot less HP than I do. So I could just fire off a discharge. Alternatively, I could just U-turn and see what he does in response. Uh, so I'm actually going to take the Pelipper off of here, and I'm going to take the Rotom Mo off of here. Uh, why isn't the Rotom Mo going away? This, 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 this. Go away. Thank you. Okay, cool. Now we got six months. So yeah, I think I'm going to U-turn here. Which is uh, an initial momentum move. This should be Scarfed. He's going to U-turn as well. That's going to do 27. That's just my attack stat, so there's nothing worth calcing there. All right, and let's see what he goes into. Hopefully it's Mamoswine, and we can get in our Walking Wake for free because he is Terrifier. There we go. There's Mamo. So I guess he anticipated me to Discharge. I did just click U-Turn, and my opponent has not a single switch for Scald on their team. So this is a free Scald. <laughs> this is Choice Specs Scald coming at him. So we're going to swap in. Uh, we can also see how much that did to the Mamo. Uh, I'm on the wrong thing here. So that did 15%-ish, uh, 5, 10, 15, yeah. About 14 to 15%, about 14. Let's see what kind of mammal this is. Uh, doesn't seem to be max HP. U-turn uh, should never do that much, that's weird. Okay, let me grab my health bars here. So the mammoth swine, which is the fourth mon, is at like 86, right? 
86. Okay, let's go back here. Battle, and we're going to click Scald. For absolutely free, not a single switch in on my opponent's team. But they are going to switch. Cool. So let's see what comes in here. It's going to be the Ditto. If we get a burn, this is big. If not, it's fine. We can just go to Screamtail. He can always flip turn. Should be cool, I guess. So that's going to turn into me. And it's going to take a little bit of damage from the Scald. Not too much, because it is quad resisted, but it's not bad. No burn. Uh, but that's fine. We can just go into Screamtail here. Uh, they could also opt to flip turn. Uh, but I really don't want to catch a dragon move right now. I think I would live my own wake's attack. Let me just check. Walking wake versus walking wake. Uh, I don't have this set here. Uh, dragon pulse if it's not specs. Eh, no, it's close. It's a roll, so I'm going to swap. I'm going to go into my scream. Right here. And I didn't get a chance to see how much the walk the uh, ditto is at. Uh, the Mammoth Swine is at 86. I also didn't replace Ditto on the layout. I got to do that. There is the flip turn. We take... Okay, cool. Not too much. And we are going to get leftovers. So I have to go and change... Uh, who? Pelipper to Ditto, right? That's Ditto. All right, cool. Uh, let's go back to here. This is most important. And then here and here. All right, so I didn't get a chance to see how much the uh, the wake took. That's fine. Uh, I'm just going to switch here. I could also get up rocks, but I don't know what this thing is yet. If it's banded, if it's like super strong or whatever. Um, I could go into my... Huh. I have a few options here. I have Rillaboom. I have wake. I think I'm going to go Rillaboom. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go boom. Big boomer. Not staying in here. Flip turn was good. Uh, if I caught that, though, something was dead. I might do it next time. We'll see. Here is our Rillaboom. And how much are we going to take from this? So he goes for Stealth Rocks. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go for a knockoff here. I'm going to get rid of an item. Heat Crash will do decent damage. Uh, I'm actually going to calc that right now. Copperaja. Give me Heat Crash over Earthquake. Heat Crash. Uh, into my Rillaboom. What is going on here? Hold on. Let me refresh this. Uh, Rillaboom versus Copper. Copperaja. Heat Crash. Okay, that does a lot. Uh, that's Assault Vest Sheer Force Max Attack Adamant. Okay. So, we're going to go for the uh, knockoff here. Let's see what he wants to do. He's going to switch out. Cool. All right, what's coming in? Overquill on a knockoff. Cool, we'll get rid of its item. Let's see if it's Intimidate. Probably is. Yep. So, Overquill is Intimidate. Fantastic. Good to know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Get a crit there. No big deal. Black Sludge, gone but the terrain is going to heal him. So considering how much that did, 6% uh, healed. He took about 20 from a crit. Overquill on a crit knockoff. Uh, crit knockoff. Hello. There we go. So this thing actually doesn't have like max defense. It might actually just be max feed jolly uh, based on that. Uh, no, he's at 10. Never mind, never mind. He's slower than me. He's definitely slower. I'm going to U-turn. He's going to withdraw. So the rocks are up on my side. That's a little bit annoying. He's going to go into Tornadus. I am going to get a U-turn off here. And honestly, at this point, I think... Hmm. Well, I think I still go Zap here. And I still U-turn. So I'll go Zapdos. He should not want to stay in here. I am Boots. So I take no damage. Uh, his Torn is at 79-ish. Uh, no, 89-ish. Sorry. 89. His Overquill. This is hard to all keep track of. His Overquill in the fifth position is at about 90. So there we go. 
And uh, we're just going to U-turn again. He is going to withdraw. Probably into Mamo again. There's Ditto, actually. Okay. So Ditto comes in as my Zapdos. So this is going to let me get up rocks, which is really nice. So there comes the Ditto. We'll go for U-turn into Screamtail. And the Ditto is sitting at about... Uh, how much is it? Let's see. Well, once Scream comes in, we'll find out. His Torn got regen, so that's at 100 again. And so we take some Rocks damage. We're going to get some recovery from the Grassy Terrain and our Leftovers. And then the Zapdos, or Ditto rather, is at how much? It's at... That is the 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 72. 72. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we're going to get up rocks. We're going to stop all this uh, switching around here. There's the U-turn. Should be back in a Copperaja. That's fine. I think we're okay with that. It's not the end of the world. All right. Yeah, there's the copper. I'm gonna get it rocks up. Beautiful. And heal up to full. This copper was at full, right? It didn't take any damage. It just got up rocks and got out. It's not even gonna get any recovery here from the grassy terrain, I don't think. So I didn't get to actually scout uh, like what kind of set this thing is because all it did was go for stealth rocks. So, once again, I'm in a position where I have to bring something in. I don't want him play roughing into my walking wake. Um, I'm tempted to just go Rillaboom again and get back up the terrain, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Switch. Back into the dock, the Rillaboom. And let's see what my opponent chooses to go for this time. Does he double again? Does he stay in an attack? Probably a heavy slam or something. There is the heat crash. Okay, so he reads the Rillaboom. I do not die. And he is going to take Rocky Helmet damage here. Uh, now, this is one of my tools against the... Uh, against the Urshifu. So, I actually want to fake out here, I think. Uh, I could knock again. Knock again is not terrible. U-turn catches the Overquill and then lets me go for a free Dragon Pulse. So I kind of like that better. Uh, considering he can Heat Crash again, he can also Steel Move. I don't think he Play Roughs here, so I am going to U-turn. So he is going to switch out. Cool. This should be the Overquill again. There's the Overquill. It's going to take Rocks damage this time. And this time we're going Walking Wake and we are getting a KO. No more messing around. Um, I'm wondering how much Copper Raja takes. We didn't see an item on Copper Raja either, so it could still be Assault Vested, for all we know. So we're going to U-turn out. Uh, the Urshifu can be a lot of different things, obviously, but so be it. We have to live with that. Uh, so let's get in Walking Wake once again. So he got more damage off on me than I did on him, obviously, over through the throughout the course of this game, but that's okay. Let's see how much the Overquill ends up at after this. Uh, the Copper also took some damage there. It took, like, Rocky Helmet and then got healed. So, 84, then to 92, I guess. Right? And this Overquill is sitting at just below 75. So, 74. Uh, where's the Overquill? Overquill is at 74. So, right here, I'm going to go for the uh, Dragon Pulse. If the Copper comes in, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. We can just sack Rillaboom. We do have to keep one Rillaboom switch in for Grassy Terrain for Sneasler, though. That is something that I have to consider. It's something that I'm going to lost in right now. All right. So there goes the Overquill. Ditto. Copper Aja. Okay. Let's see how much this does. Copper comes in, takes rocks. 6%. And Dragon Pulse comes out and does not too much, but a decent chunk. A lot of different plays I can make here. 
Uh, I can Dragon Pulse again and Scout. I can go into my Zapdos here. Hmm. Thinking about how I want to play this here. So Torn's an issue if I let Zapdos take too much damage, but I think I'm still going to go into it. Static chance and whatnot. So let's switch out. See what my opponent's play is here. Copper is going to go for Heavy Slam. That is going to maybe proc... Oh my god, that did a lot. Okay. So I could be Heat Wave. Uh, with that in mind, I think I might just Roost here. I think I am just going to Roost. So he's going to stay in. Let's see what he goes for. Is it another Heavy Slam? Is it a Heat Crash? What are we doing here? Heat Crash. How much does this do? Good amount. Has another chance to get static. There we go. We get the static. Beautiful. And now, because he went for a heavy slam into my walking wake, I have a feeling he doesn't actually have play rough. Could very well be the case. So I think I'm going to U-turn back into my walking wake here. Before roosting. So here comes Wake. Shouldn't take too much from an ensuing attack. We'll see. All right. What's this copper at? I didn't get to see in time. Couldn't move because it's paralyzed. Fantastic. So now, now, we get to go for, I kind of want a Draco here. Grassy Terrain is no longer up. I think Draco's a two at KO. So I'm gonna go for it. Stays in. Good play. That is a two at KO. From what I can tell. Because I think it was above 60. There's Earthquake. Okay. Is that Life Orb? No, it's not. Okay. So we have another free Draco here. I'm just gonna fire it off. Cool. Copper's finally down. This thing was doing way too much work to my team. So that is a dead Copper Raja. Goodbye. You're at zero. All right. Now, everything else is quite healthy. I am at minus four, to, um, minus four special attack, so Ditto coming in here is actually not a threat at all. In fact, I might just Draco again if Ditto comes in. I'm not sure, though. We'll see. Trailblaze Urshifu is a little bit problematic, obviously. In comes Torn. Torn does not have boots. Interesting. Okay. So this thing can still break through Mamoswine, Overquill, and I just want to see how much Mamoswine's max attack Adamant Ice Shard does to my Walking Wake. Ice Shard, max attack Adamant does 25%. So this actually is worth conserving. Uh, now, I can obviously Draco again. Um, but I think I am just going to go into Zapdos. Zapdos should be a fine play here. And, uh, yeah, with the copper down, that's one less annoying threat. In comes Zap. We do see the plot. Okay, cool. Now he does have to hit whatever move he goes for. Uh, let's go for Discharge. This might kill me. Oh, never mind. It's agility. Is it weakness policy? And is it EV to live discharge? Let's find out. It's Wakan. Okay. Cool. Still takes a, a healthy chunk from that. No para. Okay. Let's f fire off another one. Sludge bomb coming out. Is this going to kill me? It does not. It is not enough to kill me thanks to my Spideth investment. Okay, so the Torn is no longer an issue. Let's go. That thing is dead. Now, Mamoswine can come in. <laughs> it can Ice Shard me. It can Trailblaze, which obviously is a problem. Um, but if it does that... Does it take... Oh, it's Boots. Okay. So this thing is Boots. Do I need this for anything else? The Torn is dead. I don't think I do. 
I think once my Sneasler gets its uh, berry procced, uh, not its berry, its grassy seed procced, I think I just win the game because Ditto doesn't actually copy on Burden. So he's only going to have Overquill to deal. So yeah, I think I'm just going to U-turn. I maybe should have Roosted, actually. Because that would have static chanced. Terrifier is a little bit annoying because I can't actually go Screamtail. I won't be able to touch this thing. Um, just trying to think here what the best play is. Hmm. I think it is still Screamtail, though. Because it's not like this thing can recover, right? And I'm Fizz Def on Scream. So I should be able to take this thing on just fine. Even if it does Terrifier. Not the end of the world. Let's see if it Terra's. Does not Terra, just goes for Earthquake. So he predicted Roost, interesting. All right. I could have just Weather Bolt as well. So this thing is Boots, huh? All right. So let's think. How do I do this? At this point, do I just wish? And then try to get something in. Yeah, I think I do. I think I do just wish here. He is going to withdraw, interestingly enough. Now, the Mammal did take some more... No, it didn't take some more chip. Because it's boots. So, it's still at 86. So, in comes Overquill. I get off a wish. Which I think is going to force the Overquill into attacking. Right here. Because I have a Zapdos that's very low. And I have a Rillaboom that's really low. So, I think he attacks at this point. So, I think I go Colossal. My weakness policy, Colossal, is very interesting here. He doesn't want my Walking Wake to get wished. So yeah, I'm going to go Cole here. I.E. Matheson. Let's go. So I think the Overquill just took rocks as well, so it should be sitting at about uh, 61. There we go. In comes my Colossal. It is going to take rocks. That's fine. He's going to go for Toxic. Fantastic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin. And if he hits me with a Water Move, I'm going to get Steam Engine. So there's my Wish. Comes through. Take some Toxic. So the rocks don't really matter, actually. That's fine. And then we can just Rapid Spin here. We can also go for an Earth Power because his Torn is gone. So that's an option, too. Earth Power is not bad here because if he goes into Ditto trying to copy me to Spin... He's going to get messed up. Um, my rocker is still alive, though, and very healthy. So I am just going to spin. I just want to see if he does go ditto here. Let's see. It is ditto. That is his play. Now, I'm actually speed tying ditto after this rapid spin. Funny enough. Because if it's scarfed, right? We're speed tying. So here comes the rapid spin. Now, if he wastes a turn rapid spinning himself, I'm actually going to get a KO here. So, I'm thinking about what I should do in this position. Um, Wake is an option. Zapdos is an option on Earth Power. Scald could come out, though. How much is my Zapdos at? 31, too low. You know, I think I'm just going to Earth Power. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to Earth Power. Okay, cool. We get ours off first, which means this Ditto is now... Bye-bye. <laughs> it's gone. All right. Cool. Now, this does open the door to Urshifu. But Urshifu, we can KO through um, Sneezler. Because we're Terra Water, so we actually resist the Aqua Jet at all times. Uh, it just can't get too fast. I can't get let it get, like, three... Um, Three trailblazes off, I guess. <laughs> that would be the only, like, bad thing. Um, but I am just going to Earth Power here. Not even going to think. There is the trailblaze. So he's not going to KO me. And he's going to take an Earth Power to the face. Which is going to do decent damage. It puts him at uh, 65%. Going to keep racking up poison here. Um... 
And being that his only mons alive are, well, the Ditto's dead. Let's get rid of the Ditto from the layout. His Urshifu's sitting at 65, so we'll put it there. And his Overquill is at 61. So I think I can afford to let him Trailblaze again. I don't think it does anything. So I'm just gonna Earth Power. So he is gonna Trailblaze again, that's fine. Two Trailblazes is fine, because I go down to Toxic this turn. And he shouldn't be faster than my Sneasler. Also, I still have Grassy Glide. So I can click Fake Out into Grassy Glide and this thing should just die. So it should be fine. Fake Out will give me the recovery to not die to Aqua Jet. I think I already don't die with Rillaboom. I'm gonna check. Uh, Rillaboom versus Urshifu. Rapid Strike, it hasn't shown any boosting item. At worst, it's Mystic Water. Mystic Water. Adamant. Aqua Jet, please. Aqua Jet to me does 13%, which is 51 HP. I'm currently at 41, so after uh, Grassy Terrain Recovery, I'll actually be out of range. So we're going to fake out into Grassy Glide. Thankfully, we got rid of the rocks. So his Mamoswine can also be Trailblaze. That's something that I considered. Uh, so we are going to fake out here. There goes my fake out. Boom. Nice. And that should be Grassy Glide range. I'm assuming he Aqua Jetted there. Now his Aqua Jet never kills. So we're just gonna glide. There we go. Dead. Also, I think I got Grassy Terrain Recovery first there, interestingly enough. So yeah, weird. <laughs> okay, so now if his Mamoswine kills me actually, mm, it'll live. It'll live Sneasler currently. But it can't hit Sneasler for super effective. So I think I just U-turn. I think I just U-turn into Sneasler and win the game. His Urshifu is dead. He's gonna Terra. So if he chooses to Trailblaze here, I won't die. He takes Rocky Helmet, I get in Sneasler. This thing can't hit Sneasler hard after I Terra. Grassy Terrain is up, so Earthquake is weakened. Fire and Ice are both resisted by water. So I think we should be good here. I think we just go Sneasler. He goes for Ice Shard, great. That's gonna KO me. And then I go Sneasler, I Terra. And I SD and I win the game. Because his Overquill should die from 50 at plus two. Well, plus one after the, you know what. All right, let's do it. It's time. I could have also gone Walking Wake, but this is cooler. <laughs> this is just infinitely cooler. Um, so the one thing that could happen here is that he could Trailblaze. I just want to see how much Mamoswine's max attack Adamant Trailblaze does in grassy terrain. It's not so much the speed boost that I care about, it's the damage. Into Sneasler, Terra Water, Trailblaze, I'm at plus one. Your max attack adamant, 31%. <laughs> That's insane. That's actually insane. So I'm gonna Terra and I'm going to Swords Dance. And he's going to withdraw, interestingly enough. I think he'll die to close combat here. I want to see if Overquill dies. Overquill. Let's give it max defense. Uh, let's check close combat at plus two with the Intimidate applied. Does 50. I want to see how much he's at. 49.7 min. So we're going to Terra into a Water type. Should be good here. The Mamoswine's also a little bit higher now. All right, we get the SD off. The Intimidate went off, obviously. I want to see how much his Overquill is at here after Grassy Terrain Recovery. Mm. It's at 55. Uh, so how much does Acro do with no item? Actually, let me just see how much he does to me with, like, Gunk Shot. Gunk Shot on a crit does 84. I think I live that into shard unless he poisons. And even if he does... So I should just acro and not get the defense drop. 
Because there's a good chance he's just max, max. So yeah, I'm going to acro. Walking Wake can clean this game anyway. So that's fine. And then we CC and we win. Toxic doesn't matter unless he has Protect. He could be Protect. I could have subbed to Scout. I do have Substitute on here, so I could have subbed to Scout. But there was no point. If he went for an attacking move, then... Okay, so there's the Grassy Terrain going through. That's fine. I'm going to get that too next turn. So that's okay. Never mind. It's gone. <laughs> I wasn't keeping track of Grassy Terrain turns. Uh, let's just CC and see if he has Protect. Nope. Alright, cool. That should be the game. Because plus one Sneasler to a Mamoswine should KO with close combat. Uh, even if he's max HP. 140 normally. And if he's Terra Fire. Whoops. I don't think he's max HP, firstly. Uh, Terra... Fire. Huh. There is a chance he lives if he's max HP. Um, but only if he's max HP. It's a roll. Uh, it's 70 to 82. So I'm just going to fire it off. We should win here. Let's see. Sneasler. Let's go. Absols take a big win. Uh, what is that? Like a 5-0? What died? Rillaboom and... It's a 4-0. Rillaboom and, uh, and Colossal, right? All right, going to say GG's to my opponents. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this game, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe as well as I am back to uploading. You guys can enjoy these, uh, these games, be many of them. And uh, thank you guys again. Catch you later.